Hello, uh, friends of the internet. I'm here with almost the entire creative team of Hannah Ha Ha, which uh, I think you guys debuted at Slam Dance last year, which is kind of fortuitous because you're coming out almost a year after your premiere. And then anyone who didn't attend Slam Dance 2022, Hannah Ha Ha uh, is about, gosh, it's just about Hannah trying to go through the job market, for lack of a better term. It's about a lot of things, honestly. But thank you all so much for joining me on this busy, busy Monday after a busy, busy slam dance. So welcome, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. So I was doing some research, and I actually found out that this was a short for it was a film. Let's talk about that real quick. What did you want to expand on from that short? Well, we wanted to do something with the same creative team. Hannah had been begging to be in films her whole life and fought the chance when we uh, had this short film. And Hannah, if you want to take it away, I think... It's a nice jumping off point from there. Yeah. Jordan really set you up. Yeah, there. I was like, should I just let that go? Or yeah, so Jordan and I have been friends since college and he was always trying to get me to do stuff like this with him. <laughs> I was never very interested in acting, but during the pandemic, I was also unemployed and I owe Jordan a lot of favors <laughs> through the years. So he was able to scoop me up and we ended up having a really incredible or what I think was a really incredible time. I won't speak for Josh and Jordan, but it was just we, a we loved time. it. It was yeah, a good time. It was a good time. We had a it good time. The, it was the best time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say three days is an ideal amount of time to spend making a movie, which we learned on this short. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we and then we just, I guess they, pretty soon after, like a month after you guys came back with a script for a feature. So we had a great time on the short film. That's insane. <laughs> a three day shoot. Uh, like, I, I think I was, I think it was language lessons that came out two years ago where they're basically like recording over Zoom the whole time. They said that the, to the like... The Swanberg film? Yeah. I think it's Natalie Morales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that in that? I think they t said they took 17 days to do that. And I was like, oh, okay. That seems like a relatively short amount of time. And then you guys say, you know, three days. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I feel like that's... <laughs> That's an insane, insanely short amount of time, but I, you know, respect to all the people who are doing that short turnaround. I, th I think for the, you know, corners were cut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it was, yeah, it was a lean operation, you know. Yeah, and movie, I think we're starting to see kind of more being talked about with you know, 20 somethings. Hannah, you could talk about this. But I think film felt really authentic to my own experience. And I know that's a weird word to use authentic. Coming out of high school, it's like I would have conversations like Hannah and Paul would have, where it's like, oh, you just gotta, you know, go to college or go get a coding job or something like that. And I just want to commend that because it's kind of feels like a conversation, a lot of the conversations I would have, especially because I just turned 27 this past year, and I still remember getting a call from my high school. They would do these, like, they did this one-year check-in, like, oh, you graduated high school like a year ago. What are you up to? And, I call, and they, they asked the questions, and I was like, I don't know. I'm just kind of playing uh, Halo 4. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of chilling. And they're like, uh, are you going to school? You know, are you doing this or that? And I'm like, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, there's not really a whole lot out there right now for um, for people like me. So it was a very interesting experience to kind of relive that in Kanahaha. But, uh, I guess are you are you are you would you say are you from a s similar kind of town to where we set Hannah ha, ha just kind of like a country town or are you in a more like city a suburb, area uh, a suburb. A suburb of a can uh, Kansas City it's technically not even a town it's like a town with maybe like 
a thousand people, maybe like twenty minutes away from Kansas City. So it was like you had to walk everywhere if you didn't have a car, and then it's just like okay, how do you get a job doing that? You know, you have to get start riding the bus all the time. But actually, what that's actually what started all of this was just I was like, you know, I'm bored at home. I'm gonna talk about movies a lot and see if anyone likes it. So Hannah, was this part of your own experience? That, you know, is this true to your life? Yeah. I guess I, I don't think that there was anything like directly related to Hannah and the movies story. That's my story. And, and Josh would be, you know, the ones to ask on that. What I can say is that I relate to it a lot. And at the time that we were filming, especially, I went was going through a big change in my career and dealing with like a lot of the same issues that in the film. So in that way, I related to it a ton. I also have had some negative experiences with healthcare and just sort of how difficult those things can be to maneuver if your job that just provides it for you. So in that way, I can see myself in this story. I also think that it's just a very, I don't know, it's a unique moment in time that Jordan and Josh, I think, really picked up on where you get kicked off of your parents' health insurance at 26. And, you know, that's a relatively new thing, right? That's since Obamacare was passed. So that's something that I think was a really uh, brilliant vehicle and then Josh pulled on. I, I was just going to say, uh, you know, I, I think when you said, you had said something about authentic being a weird word. I, I don't think it's a weird word. We wanted to definitely speak to something authentic that our generation is dealing with and going through. And a lot of people don't really see this kind of representation in a lot of movies. You know, most movies aren't dealing with the topics that we're talking about and trying to speak to sort of, you know, the, the problems that in their everyday lives. And, you know, I, we, de we definitely feel, you know, like while Josh and I aren't stuck doing things like taking the bus or walking everywhere, we definitely feel for the people that are in those positions and have a lot of empathy and wanted to sort of present someone who has to, uh, or is choosing, honestly, in a lot of ways, choosing to live their lives like that. And also wanted to show the positives that have in their community and does have. Yeah, no, I, I think Hannah, the character is, it's less about like the specificity of it and more about like how generalizable she is as an archetype for a lot of people, regardless of people who are like facing the exact specific circumstances. It's sort of where you take a condition and you sort of create like an archetypal character embodying it in, in you know, like the sort of underline or underscore like the things we wanted to say. Yeah, I think it's just sort of more of like a, a generalizable character for a uh, enormous group of people all going through a very similar thing. Um, I, I, I do think it, it does I represent a very kind of unique moment we're in right now where I think a lot of people are growing up and saying, oh, hey, this, it, it, this is just the hand I'm dealt and here's how I got to deal with it. And, you know, Hannah, I don't know how much we want to go into the story. Kind of, it coalesces in, I think, a very realistic situation. I think a lot of us have dealt with the just kind of, uh, not anti-climax, but kind of the not wanting to deal with it anymore. And uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is... Hannah's relationship with Paul, her brother. It, it was funny when I was creating questions for, for his character. I, I didn't remember his name at first, so I was like, I almost typed uh, Mr. NPR because that's kind of how he sounds at times. And I've, I've probably been that guy a few times where he's like, hey, you're going to do this, right? You're going to do these things I'm telling you, right? Because this is what how you succeed. And I, I know Roger's not here. Does anyone want to talk about the kind of dynamics of that, of Paul's measure of success versus Hannah's? I think like in the way that Hannah has, you know, she is her own character, but she also, there's like an archetypal quality to her. I think Paul is very similar in that way, 
And so, you know, I think not that everyone can be easily cat pandas in the world, but there's also a lot of Pauls in the world, you know. And I think an important quality of Paul that hopefully comes through as the movie goes on is that at the end of the day, he is well-intentioned. You know, there's he's certainly condescending and patronizing and doesn't go about things the right way necessarily. And I don't think he's really taking the time to get to know his intentions are good. And at the end of the day, he's not entirely wrong about what he's telling her about how he thinks her life is going to go. And I think part of what the movie is questioning is why is it that he may be a little right? I think that's kind of like the the key to Paul as a character. What do you guys think, Jordan, Hannah? I agree. Take it away. All right. Hannah, well, I, 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 do you want to debate this, Jordan? Do you want to take the opposing point of view? I would like to, yeah, take the contrarian point where Hannah is wrong. Paul yeah. is the good guy and everything in the movie is meant to, you know, like steer yeah. the audience towards that. And that's one of the big disagreements Josh and I had while making the movie is who was going to end up in the edit winning to naturally get shot more with Hannah, which was my mistake. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, big re-edit, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's one of the reasons uh, we casted Roger in our new film was so that he got more of a chance, you know, and yeah, then we didn't the get Hannah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little known fact you know <laughs> so are you calling the new movie take two then yeah exactly it's like roger take two yeah it's called it's called paul paul boo hoo paul boo -hoo. <laughs> yeah. oh goodness another relationship i found interesting was hannah's dad i, I don't remember his name off the top of my head but I think Jordan, he's your dad, right? Avram, yeah. I don't like his name either. Um, but he's a good man. <laughs> and uh, a good actor. Yeah, there. It, it's interesting because scenes he has with Hannah kind of come off in this almost documentarian way where it feels like these two people are just having this conversation and there's this sense of... Uh, the, the relationship they have just being almost a codependency on one another. It's like when she goes out and does the thing, Hannah goes out and does things other than watch, you know, Twilight Zone, it, it makes him a little sad. And I just want to, what do you guys think about that relationship? Is that, I, you know, like, uh, Josh, you might have some counters to this, but I, right. I, so get ready to get my pen start writing down points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I definitely wanted there to be almost, you know, more, more of a friendship to, to, to the characters and, you know, sort of, sort of talk about, you know, like how our, a lot of people in our generation just kind of go off and, aren't close with their parents and I, I i we wanted to have that relationship you know we, we wanted to just portray something that we think is not not as present in our culture anymore and also just sort of the important of keep the importance of you know treating treating our family right while they while we still have time to and Josh, I'm ready if you have anything you want to... No, I agree. I, I, I agree completely. I Josh, I... Josh hates his parents, though. So it's like it's like a wish fulfillment <laughs> fantasy. That's not true. That's not true. For me, um... I love my parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of projection going on there. Uh, I, uh, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think you're right that there's like a codependency <laughs> with them. But I also think that like the codependency is not necessarily a bad thing. I think that you you are right that he does get sad and does sort of end up wandering about. But I do think there's like a, a codependency that is unhealthy, and then there's a codependency that's like a normal human function, and that I think people are meant to sort of depend on each other, to depend on, you know, whether it's their families or their friends or whoever, you know, the, the community around them. It doesn't necessarily have to be your family. It doesn't necessarily have to be your friends. But I think that there's nothing wrong with being dependent on other people, you know, if you're helping people to, you know, also have other people help you and to sort of, you know, coexist that way. So yeah, that, that's that's the only thing I'd add. But otherwise I agree with everything Jordan said. I'll add to what I said. <laughs> oh. You don't need to add. <laughs> All right. Uh no, no, I guess, yeah. 
<laughs> no, no, it's okay. We don't want to give too much away of this very heavy. Leave a little mystery, you know. Yeah. yeah, we have Shyamalan twists. Uh, make sure the audience, you know, catches yeah. that that there's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of unexpected. Yeah, Dave Bautista shows up at the end, and he's like, "Hey, what's up?" That would Hannah? be cool. That's that actually big, in the yeah. that that is in the theatrical release. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna want to see it in theaters. <laughs> yeah, Hannah, Hannah's come. moved to a cabin, and he knocks at it and says, "Hey, Hannah, what's up?" How are you doing? Want to watch it's, like Blade, it's like the opening of Blade Runner, but he, you know, it's like flipped roles. Now he's, you know, hunting Hannah. I think that'd be cool, Jordan. That's we should. That's good for the sequel. Roger greenlit it. Yeah, tiny, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it's greenlit. T- tiny glasses and everything. Little, yeah, yeah. Uh, another aspect I want to talk about, other than the relationships, because I do think the relationships do feel very, very very lived in that is the cinematography I, I it's kind of unique i don't think i've seen anything this year that's full frame for at all even the big releases like black panther i, I, I guess it's last year but i've been watching it for review so you almost have this kind of halo look to the movie was that like a conscious thing or was yes, it really uh, hot t- outside so totally, totally conscious, but you know it's totally up for debate as to whether or not people like it. We like it. <laughs> was it was it something that distracted? Uh, distracted? Distracted? No. I thought but I did... just was thinking like I I was thinking the entire movie. I was like, is this conscious or is it gonna or is the answer just gonna be oh it's really hot outside and we can't control okay. the way the lenses fog up. Well, we 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 did control that. It was uh pantyhose over the lens some people love it team team love it we're getting a lot of haters so it's another reason to see the movie. <laughs> you know you know what was the funniest review i read about it i don't know if this was one of you because i, I know you're both on letterbox it was, it was probably mine someone said like project this on the side of your barn or something like that that was a hybrid yeah josh and i wrote that review you know that that's probably the best way to watch this movie is just put it up on your barn. Just buy a barn, you know, just buy a barn. It's honestly a real shame that we, it's a big shame, I think, and a regret that we haven't been able to do that yet. I would love to do a barn screening of it. And uh, if, if we can organize that in Kansas, would you, would you be able to get people to come to the side of a barn? Yeah, maybe. I know, I know there's true false fest. Uh, next month got to be a good quality barn though because otherwise jordan's going to be upset if the quality of the barn side yeah. isn't right you know and yeah no knots in that wood for sure yeah, yeah. it's got to be good quality <laughs> yeah no holes i'll bring my sander <laughs> and a, lay- a layer of white paint <laughs> no there are some pretty good uh barns out in kansas right you know, i bet you could probably just like pull off to the side of like 435 and just and, and just like project at a barn or something like that i i do po- hope barn or not that people do see this movie uh you don't have to have a barn uh it, it'll be uh out digitally this friday on all the platforms you rent movies on and i think you're also in select theaters this friday too right i i i believe i believe we are in theaters la and new york starting the 10th and then in March, it'll be released through Fandor. And then hopefully after that, available on more platforms. We're, we're really, uh, whoever's li- like listening, we really hope uh, you can catch this movie if you're in LA, New York. And if not, sometime in March, subscribing to Fandor. You're just doing your Oscar qualifying run of LA, New York. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it, yeah, we're, we're, on the, we're, we're on the table for that. It's pretty exciting. Okay. Yeah. and. I'll make sure to tell everyone to go see it. And maybe I, I've been telling slam dance people this too from the 2023 lineup. Maybe I don't know how you do this, but film independent host online screenings. So maybe try and do that. And when it comes out and on Fandor near March and to get some eyes on it after the spirit awards stuff is over. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having Thank us. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. I, I just I, I I love interviews all the time, it, it, even if it seems I'm totally just like off the wall sometimes. Where I'm like, I don't know, I can't think of my next question. 
So thank you for joining. We really just appreciate that. We just really appreciate that we're on here and thank you so much for doing this and for watching the film. Yeah, no problem. I I even uh, did it the right way. I even downloaded it and watched it via QuickTime. Nice. Projected onto your barn. Yeah. Projected onto my uh, 24 inch uh, Dell barn. barn. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> Thank but, you for doing that. Yeah, it's just, you know, the true cinematic experience, you know, I put, I made sure it's at 24 frames a second on filmmaker mode so that Tom Cruise wouldn't get mad at me. <laughs> yeah. And seriously, thank you all so much. I hope people see the film this Friday uh, and then March with Fandor. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Take care.